Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video and welcome to our new BMW X3 M4Ti LCI. A little earlier than we expected, we were told by BMW that this would be arriving in February but we got a phone call a few weeks ago telling us that it was actually arriving in December. So we've now owned the car for a few weeks and we're still getting used to it, but overall we're very, very happy with the decision that we've made. And it was sad to see the Range Rover go, but this I think is a better car all round. So I guess let's just talk very briefly about why we chose this um, and some of the other cars that we looked at and then I'll do a quick walk around, show you the exterior, the interior in a little more detail. So in terms of why we chose this, there are a couple of reasons. So we looked at other cars, we went and looked at Evokes, we had a look at McCann's, we looked at Q5s. The Q5 actually was probably the strong contender for this. However, it just didn't make much sense because it's very likely that a new Q5 will be arriving in the next 12 months or so. So we were a little worried about having a car that would immediately date, if that makes sense. Um, and a friend of mine owns one of these. He was kind enough to let us drive it and kind of check it out. And one thing that surprised us about this car was how big it is inside. And that's really important to us because of our girls. So all of the other cars, excluding the Q5, felt a little small inside. Um, also, this is my wife's car, so I needed to make sure that she was you know, happy with it, etc. I didn't want her to get a car for her, for me, if that makes sense. So I tried my best to get her to go for the McCann GTS, but she just weren't having it. Um, hence this, which I think is a really, really good compromise. So we started by me trying to go down the competition route. Of course, she wasn't really having any of that. So we ended up with this, which is the M40i. And it's very, very quick. I can't remember the actual stats because it's me and I'm never that prepared for a video, but I believe it's somewhere around the 380 PS or whatever mark. And it feels it, it feels really quick, has a decent sound. It's not quite as raucous as the US spec cars are because of course the OPFs, etc. Also, we've noticed that it isn't quite as loud as the pre-facelift car, but we're gonna hopefully work on that or I'm going to and she'll just one day realize her car's slightly louder, but we'll worry about that as and when we come to it. But for the time being, you know, it's the perfect all-rounder. It does exactly what we need it to do. It looks great, etc. And um, the other reason that we chose this over some of those other cars is the finance. So BMW offered us very good money for our Range Rover. And on top of that, the actual deal they offered was very good. Um, this car is around 300 pounds cheaper per month than our Range Rover was. And the APR is very low. It's just a really good solid deal, I think. And again, that works for us. Um, we weren't necessarily looking for a cheaper car but we knew that we wanted to downsize and we didn't necessarily want to be paying more for a smaller car, if that makes sense. So it just worked in all respects. Now, we ordered this car from BMW Park Lane and they were great. The order process was very straightforward. It took maybe a couple of hours. We went into town, ordered it. We were done by lunchtime. The uh, kind of post order process of so being kept up to date, et cetera, with where the car was at what stage it was at, et cetera. Could have been slightly better, but to be honest, I think with how quick it kind of went, there wasn't really much they could update us on beyond, you know, your car's in being built. Oh, actually it's it's been built a little sooner. It's now ready for collection. The handover process, et cetera, was very good. The person who handed the car over to us was very, very knowledgeable and helps us with a lot of the basics and um, that was very smooth and yeah they've been great actually they've been keeping in touch with us since over the past couple of weeks just to see how we're getting on with the car etc um you know they help us they helped us sorry set up the bmw app and so on so yeah really really happy with the service that we received and that was again something that was very welcome to us because as you know land rover it's not quite been the same for us just us. This is not a criticism of Land Rover. I'm just telling it how it is. Um, so yeah, really, really pleased with what we've chose. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick walk around of the car. 
both the exterior as well as the interior and talk through some of the options that we chose. And let's start with the obvious thing, which is the color. This is called Sofiso Gray, and it's the color that we just gravitated toward when working through the configurator. We liked how it tied in with the black accents, which I believe are standard on the LCI because we didn't choose those. And on the pre-facelift car, I believe the standard was like an aluminium effect. So yeah, thought it tied in really nicely. And it does, it looks great in person. We didn't do too much on the exterior in terms of options. So we didn't select the laser lights. So you'll notice that we do not have the blue accents. We just didn't really feel like they were a necessary extra and they were also quite expensive. And these lights are great. They look great. They're bright enough. They have quite a nice animation when you turn the car on. But talking of the front of the car, as you can see, they've gone for a slightly more angular design with the LCI, whereas the pre-facelift had kind of a rounded front bumper. This, as you can see, has a more squared off look. And I think it works. It makes the car look a lot smarter, has a slightly nicer stance on the road and looks great. A few fake vents knocking about, but doesn't matter, it still looks good. If we work our way around to the side, there's only a couple of things to talk about around here. Firstly, the wheels. We stuck with the standard 21 inch wheels. Not many options to be honest, but these do look great. They are a bit of a pain to keep clean. So I have cleaned the car once already, but you can see it's quite dirty again. Um, so that's gonna be quite frustrating. Another thing, they are rocking Bridgestone tires at the moment. That's something that we will very likely change. I will give them a few more weeks just to see how they fully bed in, but I'm not convinced so far. These are run flat tires. Obviously the Michelins will not be, but you know, we'll, we'll worry about that as and when we need to. One other thing to point out is the calipers. We stuck with the standard blue. We just felt like blue would tie in a little nice, nicer with this color rather than red. I also feel like red is an Audi thing. Don't kill me in the comments, but that's just my opinion anyway. Um, one other thing is we do have the wing mirrors now from the competition. So again, on the pre-facelift car, it was just like standard wing mirrors, whereas these look quite nice. Um, you'll notice that there is a little camera here too. So we did add the parking plus pack, whatever they call it. So it has cameras dotted all over the car. Really cool, I'll show you that inside. Oh, one other thing, tints. They were a must, so we didn't have tints on our Range Rover. What we had was the blinds that you could pull down and they were just a bit of a pain, to be honest, and the girls were always messing around with them. So we went for tints this time. But working around to the back, again, that kind of more angular design continues. They've added more fake vents, but it just gives the car a nicer squat and uh, looks great. They do look great, even though they're fake, they look great. And I like how they've integrated the exhaust tips into the design of the diffuser. It just ties in really nicely. And generally, I think the back of the car just looks really, really smart. Now, the rear lights are tinted as standard. That's not something that we've done. And they have quite a nice design to them as well. We watched a few American videos because these came out a few months ago in the US. and. Someone described that rear light as a pincer. I think it's probably the most accurate description of it. Looks really good. Looks really, really cool at night. And that is the car. Now, one other thing that we did add was the panoramic roof, which is really cool. It's almost the entire length of the roof, and it's also a sunroof. So we had the pan roof in our Range Rover, but we only had the single piece of glass. It wasn't the sunroof. Whereas this being a sunroof is just, again, quite nice. And yeah, I think it's a really smart looking car from the outside. It's obviously a little bit dirty at the moment, but I think it's really smart. Now, if we have a quick look inside. So actually one thing to mention, we deselected the comfort pack, whatever it's called. And we did that intentionally because we were a little paranoid that the car would be stolen because these are notorious for being stolen because from what I've read on forums, the frequency between the car and the key is not that secure. So a lot of car thieves will target BMWs because they are easier to steal apparently. So again, if I'm wrong, whatever, but 
we wanted to play it safe. We have also had a Pandora alarm fitted to this car just to be extra safe. But yeah, we deselected that. And I think in doing so, without realizing, we removed the ability to turn off start stop. So if I jump in. Ugh. So the ignition switch used to be here and above it was the start stop button. They've now moved the ignition switch to here. And as you can see, there is no start stop button. It's just start the engine, that's it. None of these other buttons are for start stop. So if any of you know how to turn it off, please let us know. Um, down here, you've got obviously all sorts of buttons going on. So you've got home, you can use the control wheel, media, navigation, etc. My coffee, a mask, I'm joking. Um, handbrake, etc. Gear selector is a bit meh. You know, it's a bit basic, but it's not the end of the world. Um, these controls here haven't really changed much, but the screen has. So the screen is much bigger in the LCI. And if I just turn the car on, it is also touchscreen. So you don't necessarily have to use the control wheel, etc. It's really responsive, it's very quick. Um, we haven't really kind of sat down to play with this yet properly. Um, so we don't know all of the controls and where all of the settings are, etc. Um, but it does have CarPlay, as you just heard. CarPlay is really responsive. It is Bluetooth, so we've not had any kind of connectivity issues yet, and fingers crossed we don't. However, what we have noticed is that the quality of the audio isn't quite what we expected it to be. And that's because we paid extra for the Harman Kardon stereo. So we added that and we thought, right, it's going to be decent. Because again, in our Range Rover, we had just the standard stereo and it was awful. And yeah, it's a little bit flat. So I don't know how well you'll pick that up, but... It's just not quite what we expected. And um, it could be that I need to just play around with the equalizer that's built into the system. Um, or it might be that it's Bluetooth and maybe that's compromising the sound quality. I don't know, but that's the only kind of minor thing that we've noticed so far with relation to the CarPlay. Um, another thing, this screen here. So again, we're kind of still getting our head around it. So for example, when you turn the car on, the mile count disappears. So if I turn the car on, it then kind of just disappears and it doesn't seem to reappear when you're driving. So just another thing that we've noticed, but it is really cool. It's, um, again, it's really nice. And when you are using the BMW navigation, it will appear on this screen, etc. And at the moment, the car's in comfort, but if we change it to sport, you can see that the design of the screen will change slightly, not much, but yeah, really nice. It's really nice in here. One thing that we noticed almost immediately was how well put together it feels. It's very solid feeling. Um, you know, everything is really nice to touch. We've got the lever on the dash and the steering wheel. It's just a very nice place to be. And despite being smaller than the Range Rover, it's only really smaller in terms of width. That's where we've noticed the space difference. In terms of height, it's almost identical. You know, we haven't really noticed any difference there. And the girls have still got plenty of room back there. Their car seats are all plugged in, etc. And the seats are back at the moment because I'm filming this video, but they have plenty of leg room. So that's not an issue. And yeah, we're just we're just really happy with it. We think we've done done a good thing here. Like the Range Rover it's the right time for it to go. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll kind of talk about that when I wrap this up, but very, very nice. Now, one other thing we did add, aside from the stereo, was the M Performance stitching. So the blue and red. That's quite cool because my M3 has this. So it was like a little bit of a nod to that car, a bit of continuation. And um, yeah, it ties in really nice. And then you have like, you know, mood lighting all around here as well. Um, just really, really nice. We went for black leather. We were going to go for a lighter color, 
I was trying to get Courtney to go for brown, but she weren't having it. So we went for black. It makes the most sense with the children. You know, it's a little bit harder wearing. It's a bit easier to clean, etc. And again, it just ties in nicely with the design that's also on the seat belts too. So yeah, and then that's the, the pan roof. So you can open it once as a sunroof and then you've got the option to kind of open it up all the way as well. So there you have it. This is the new beast. Now, if you're wondering why there isn't any driving footage included in this video, well, I'm gonna do the YouTube standard thing of a first drive video on this car when the weather's slightly better and I can get some GoPros outside, etc. Um, so stay tuned for that. It's very, very nice to drive. Um, I don't wanna, you know, spoil anything, but it is really nice to drive. So that's gonna be coming very soon. Um, if you've made it this far and you have any questions about the car, anything that, you know, tips, tricks, whatever, or any questions that you wanna know, just comment down below, I'm more than happy to answer them. And yeah, another car for content. So let's see how this goes. That's gonna be it guys. I'm not gonna waffle or ramble on too much longer than I already have. Until my next video, peace.